Employees don't leave bad jobs. They leave bad managers. We hear it all the time. The job was terrible, but the people I worked with really made it worth it. And on the opposite end of that is, it was an incredible opportunity, but I just didn't like the way it was managed. In order to achieve maximum potential and employee morale as well as productivity and minimum, minimize employee turnover, we need to evaluate the three basic types of management, authoritative, laissez-faire, and democratic, and how to use them effectively. Authoritative management has one leader with all decision-making power. This management style is known to generate productivity while stunting creativity. It is not likely for this type of manager to welcome in ideas from their employees. Authoritative management is also known to inflict a great deal of stress on their employees due to them being left out of the decision-making process. It leaves them feel, feel like they do not have a voice. When gone unchecked, this type of management can lead to disaster. However, there is a time and a place where it is best used. According to the Forbes article, Democratic, Authoritarian, Laissez-Faire, what type of leader are you? Under time pressure, this style may work well, allowing the leader to make a quick decision and providing the group with direct instructions. So, when productivity and speed take priority over creativity, authoritative management is the way to go. When I think of authoritative management, I tend to think of military. On the opposite end of authoritative management is laissez-faire management. The French to English translation of laissez-faire management is let it go and let it be. Laissez-faire style creates a relaxed corporate culture, higher retention, and innovation by instilling trust in their employees. They provide the employees with their, the project and the resources to accomplish the goal and stay relatively hands-off from there. However, if the employee isn't intrinsically self-motivated, they will struggle in, uh, struggle in this environment due to the lack of accountability, support, and structure. Using this type of management requires the employee to be self-sufficient and experienced. Lastly, democratic management is the middle ground between authoritative and laissez-faire. An article from theverywellmind.com describes democratic management as everyone is given the opportunity to participate, ideas are exchanged freely, and discussion is encouraged. While democratic process tends to focus on group equality and the free flow of ideas, the leader of the group is still there to offer guidance and control. Democratic management creates participation and commitment from all employees, leadership included, because of their involvement in the decision-making process. The downfall of democratic management is maintaining time efficiency as well as hearing the voices of the minority vote. Unpopular opinions are often overlooked by the majority and deadlines can be hard to, hard to meet when trying to appease the group. It is best to use this management style when all parties are eager participants and they are willing to work together towards the common goal. Now all three of these styles can result in success or failure based on their uses. Good leadership is knowing when to give and take power what products are what projects are going to require fresh ideas and creativity and what projects are going to require a finalized decision and a great manager will know what style to use and it'll make a world of difference to their employees to quote steve jobs it's not about the money it's the people you have how you're led and how much you get it <laughs>